Hey, what's up you guys? It's Deadly here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I go about making my jam jar jet engines. So just a couple notes first. Um, I call them jam jar jet engines. Now a lot of these actually aren't even jam jars. A lot of people pointed out. Um, my personal favorite is actually a Classico pasta sauce jar. Uh, what was in the jar makes absolutely no difference. Though the Classico jar is a banger. For whatever reason, this thing is like the perfect thing to make your uh, pulse jet engines with. So there's lots of different shapes and sizes that work just as, just as well, or almost just as well. And a little disclaimer, I guess. Um, this is how I make mine. It doesn't mean that you should make them. Uh, definitely only do so if you're willing to accept the risk and you're, uh, you know, used to doing this sort of thing. Uh, never do it inside. I know I sometimes do, but I do this stuff all the time. I do have safety measures in place. Uh, I've got, you know, v uh, proper ventilation. I've got fire extinguishers around. Um, I'm always taking the necessary precautions and I never do long runs inside. I'll always open the door. I typically do them on my driveway. Um, there are plenty of reasons why you should, you probably shouldn't do this. Um, of course, one being the jar can break and then you have, you know, flaming alcohol leaking all over the place, uh, which has happened before. They can also potentially explode, though it's a lot harder to do that than most people think. Uh, essentially, if you drill your port size too small, you risk an explosion. Now that that's out of the way, um, for a jar like this, or even a plastic jar, um, the, the rule of thumb that I've read is that you want the height to be roughly twice the diameter. Now, I've done them in like all shapes and sizes. I've even gotten this thing to work. And as you can see, the diameter is nowhere near half the height. Um, I've even done spherical ones. So that's just a rule of thumb. Uh, but I can confirm though that if you follow that rule of thumb, it's it's much easier to have success. It's, it's just trickier to get the odd shape ones working. They do still work. <clears throat> so what I like to do for a jar like this, I guess let's start off with. So it is roughly three by six, perfect dimensions. Um, now I know that the port size for this specific one is gonna end up being about half inch. Just to give you guys an idea though of what happens if you do drill it too small, I'm gonna start off with 21 64ths. It's probably still gonna work, but uh, it'll likely work much better as I increase the size. You do wanna get centered or at least roughly centered. I mean, it doesn't need to be exactly bang on. I've even heard guys say that you actually want to drill the hole from the inside out. This is just so that the rough edges face um, out rather than in. You can do that if you want. I've never found it was that uh, that important. So here's how it looked at 21 64 um, I lied actually. I'm going to take this right to 3 eighths. If this is what your ratio looks like, that's actually quite a bit too small. Um, the reason why I'm going to step up a little bit more before I even attempt to run this thing, uh, when the hole is this small compared to uh, the jar, essentially if you get the air fuel ratio just bang on inside and the hole isn't big enough, um, there's going to be like a huge uh, spike in pressure inside there as soon as you get an ignition that's when it risks being dangerous because then you could actually uh, you know, really blow the jar up. So I'm gonna go up one size. There we go. Yeah, and that looks much better. There you are. Now, just for funs, I'm gonna drill a hole in this one as well and I'm gonna make it the exact same size. 
I really don't know what's going to happen. I haven't had a whole pile of luck with plastic in the past, but this one's quite rigid. Um, so let's see what happens. I need to start this one off at three eighths as well. Yep, it would help if I tighten it in. Bad. Sometimes when you drill hard plastic like this, cracks it. That's what happened last time. Pretty good. So this stuff right here is what I use for fuel in mine. It's uh, around here we call it methyl hydrate. Uh, you might know it as methylated spirits or methanol or I'm sure it goes by a pile of other names. That denatured alcohol I think I've heard it called. Um, pretty sure it's all the same shit. Uh, it's quite volatile, works really well, really forgiving. You can use different fuel, but, uh, this stuff seems to be the most forgiving and I've heard of lots of different guys using it. So it's, uh, it's definitely proven itself over the years. Uh, normally they use this stuff for, well, they use it for all kinds of different things, but the most common use I see it for is for uh, getting moisture out of uh, uh, airlines, though it's not uh, particularly nice to air tools, so I'm not suggesting it's a good idea to do that, but that's what a lot of guys do. Um, so essentially what I'm doing here, I'm adding just enough fuel to cover the bottom you don't want to go too crazy for a few reasons. One being, you know, it, these things can just run until the jar melts down or explodes. So you don't want to go too much because if it runs too long, it could become uncontrolled and unsafe and all that. Uh, but also I find when you have too much in there, a lot of times they just don't run that well um, for whatever reason. So, yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but uh, that's about where I run mine. Kind of just enough to cover the bottom. That's literally all you need. And then when you go to run it, you just shake it up, ignite, and enjoy. All right, so I'm going to shake up my uh, plastic one here first. We'll give that a go. Hopefully you can get a good view on that uh, FLIR camera. Um, because that would be cool. All right. Um, I think I know what went wrong with that one right off the bat. It didn't seal properly. When I shook it up, uh, there was alcohol leaking out. So I'm going to have to do something to prevent that from leaking. It's going to fuck with the air fuel ratio. All right, let's try that again. Okay. So... Based on how that went, I'm thinking it's probably going to need to go to a bigger hole size uh, where it did that flash and a whoosh really fast and it didn't continue going. Usually that's an indication you got to drill larger. Oop. See, not bad. Okay, so what basically just happened there is, uh, as I started filming, my FLIR camera shut off because I hadn't touched it, um, I guess, frequently enough. So as soon as I turned the camera on, I had to try and re reset it. Finally got it going again, and then I hadn't moved in my garage enough, so my light went out, and I decided to start it anyway. It worked really well. 
and then I couldn't see what happened. As you could tell, uh, basically exactly what you would think would happen with a, a plastic pulse jet. Uh, it worked well once, and now it's useless. Um, don't do that. That was dumb, because, uh, well, yeah, obviously, it, it was dumb. I, I should have just waited, put the lights back on. But uh, either way, everybody's fine. Um, I'm not going to do that again. So, given the way everything just went, I probably should just, uh, I probably should just go ahead and drill this thing right up to half inch, but for educational purposes, I am going to try and ignite it one time so you guys can see. Um, I'll just do a little readjust there. I'll shake this thing up and, uh, let you guys see what happens when the hole size is a little bit too small. Again, can't really stress enough, this would be dangerous if it was way too small, but this should be all right. Yeah, quite a whoosh, pop, pretty violent, and it didn't last. When you're seeing that, go larger. All right, so I've got the FLIR camera turned on. Um, lights are dimmed. I'm going to shake this up now. It is drilled out to half an inch. I did actually drill it from the inside out. I typically don't, but um, like I say, it is kind of recommended that you do it that way. Give it a little shake. And I'm putting it inside this uh, metal containment. If it does choose to run long enough, I'm just gonna let it do so. I've got it in the containment so if you're going to let it run until it breaks and you're inside especially obviously you want to make sure that you don't put way too much fuel and that you have something to you know uh, keep the fuel in because uh, when it does break if you don't have a bowl around it it's just going to leak hot fuel everywhere and uh, you're going to start a fire so again don't do this but if you do be safe take the necessary precautions don't be an idiot I've got fire extinguishers around, I'm wearing safety glasses, I'm keeping my distance. You know, I'm not a friggin' engineer, but uh, I'm not being stupid. And this stuff can uh, burn for quite a while. Um, another one of the reasons why you want to keep it contained. Um, yeah, currently it seems like it's actually burning hot enough that in places it might even be melting the glass. It almost looked to me earlier like it's slumped. I, I could be wrong. It might just be settling or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, could be dangerous stuff. Huh. Kind of unbelievable how long that worked. I had somebody before ask me, uh, if you could drill a hole in the side of one for air and still get it to work, I don't know if you could tell, but I actually did have a small, oh, you can kind of see it right, uh, right there. I had a small hole drilled in the side of it and, uh, well, shit, it does work. Um, I'll have to try that on a full size pulse jet here. One of these days, maybe just drill a small hole in the cover and see if it actually does work to bring in extra air. Um, I, I've just never heard of anybody really doing that other than in like valved pulse jets or, you know, more, more complex, but it seems like it does work. So I'm going to be giving it a shot here one of these days. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching guys.